Hello my dear friends, how are you? I'm Ari Thurger and today I'm going to give you a little introduction to the rune divination methods that I shall present in this channel from now on. <laughs> Finally, we have reached this point. <laughs> So, as you know, especially those following my Rune series, uh, those series have come to an end after three years. So now I would like to start with the divination methods so you can apply the information I've uh, shared with you in those videos uh, about each rune and use it when you choose the runes in any divination method or rune reading. This video today is just an introduction to the divination methods I shall present in this channel uh, in, the, in the near future. I don't think I'm going to show you today any specific method because um, there's a couple of important things you should know first, especially those coming in here uh, for, for the very first time uh, coming in, into this channel. Uh, my rune series are totally my own esoteric approach to the runes, esoteric approach, and the little academic information in those videos are only concerning mythological accounts, which helps us to understand the essence of each rune, and the certain historical facts help to not only understand the myths, but also the, the pagan mentality of the past as much as possible. So, because my rune series are a lot more esoteric, I keep those videos in a specific folder entitled The Runes, just The Runes, to separate those videos from the academic videos I have done concerning The Runes. The academic ones you can check on the folder entitled Scandinavian and Viking Studies and Runology, right? With this being said, all the videos concerning divination methods with the runes will go into the folder of my rune series that is into the folder of my esoteric approach to the runes. It, it's important to make this separation, right? The, the, this distinction to avoid the common misconceptions concerning the knowledge and the use of the runes. Uh, I have said on other videos, academic ones, academic videos concerning the runes, we do not know for a fact if the runes were ever used in divination. There are no evidences whatsoever of runes having been used by Germanic peoples in any divination method or as a magical symbol. Uh, magical symbols in general, the runes, carved on wood and bone and on other materials and surfaces and such objects used for divination or any oracular purposes. However, even though, historically speaking, the runes have no connection to divination methods, that doesn't mean we cannot turn them into tools in our magical workings, especially when it comes to divination arts. And indeed, divination with runes is a modern thing, uh, which had, um, of course, a great development since the 80s of the 20th century. As I said many times, religions, spiritualities, traditions are meant to evolve so even though the runes were never used for divination, we can adapt them to such arts because that's what we all do. We evolve and we ad adapt things according to our needs. It has always been like that. So I see no problem in using the runes uh, in um, divination methods because it's not the runes per se that make any alteration in divination arts, but it's the human intention that counts. And any symbol, any tool can be adapted and worked with. However, since the runes were not historically used for divination, and indeed divination methods with runes are a modern thing, 
we do need to understand these modern developments. If you have watched my Rune series, even if just one single video uh, concerning uh, my own esoteric approach uh, to, the, to a specific Rune, uh, you have probably noticed that in the last part of each of those videos, I give you the upright and inverted meanings of each Rune, so you can apply that information in divination methods and Rune readings. Historically speaking, there is uh, no upright meaning for each rune, not even for uh, divination methods, uh, of course, <laughs> let alone an inverted meaning, historically speaking, right? The upright and inverted meaning in, rune, in, in runes um, is an idea that comes from the tarot. And many of the rune divination methods that exist are also drawn from the tarot. Most people associate the tarot with witches, pagans, neo-pagans such as Wiccans as well, but the tarot has nothing to do with paganism. The tarot is a modern esoteric art. I repeat, the tarot isn't originally pagan or based on pagan beliefs, even if it has some pagan mysticisms and symbology, mostly Egyptian and Hindu. But those very few pagan mysticisms in tarot are highly romanticized. The tarot is mostly focused on Abrahamic systems of belief, and it also contains a lot of obsolete ideas that, well, go in accordance to the period in the Western society when the tarot was brought up for the first time, uh, which we shall get to that further ahead. The tarot, later on, at least since the 19th century, is also heavily influenced by the patriarchal ceremonial magic of Freemasonry. So we need to be aware of this within Tarot so we might understand the divination meanings and methods brought into the runes in the 20th century, especially in the 80s. Because all those meanings and methods are heavily influenced by the Tarot. Given this fact, I was never pleased with the with that amount of information in the runes or brought into the runes. As I said, it's not just religions and, spir and spiritualities and traditions that are meant to evolve, but also the human mind must evolve. So I was never pleased with several obsolete and non-pagan ideas that were attached or brought into the runes, especially in their meanings and in the in divination methods. So what I did with my rune series was completely change all of those ideas and meanings and my entire esoteric approach to the runes was to get closer as much as possible to the pagan mentality but also to fit into our modern needs and our modern approach and interaction with the world without drifting too much from the pagan essence and even keeping a certain animistic mentality towards the world we are inserted. Some of you may not be aware of this but I have started to make this pagan and uh, animistic development of rune divination and uh, rune divination methods and rune readings in the early um, 2000s. Uh, because uh, I simply did not agree with the Abrahamic mindset and political and social mentality of the Western society of the past 400 years within the runes or brought into the runes. As I said, such belief systems and ideas brought into the runes in the 20th century, uh, making the runes an alternative divination method, but pretty much the same uh, as the tarot. Only instead of cards, we now had the runes. And I did not agree with the, the great majority of information that was simply transported from one method uh, to another, from tarot into the runes. And the only thing that changed was virtually the object of divination. Because the entire background meaning was still the same. So I wanted something pagan, something animistic, and something that can also be adapted to our modern lives, because we are living now and not in the past, but without putting aside the pagan and animistic worldviews, of course. So finally, in 2011, more or less, uh, 
So right now it actually marks a whole decade. I've created my first blog uh, where I've developed the meanings of each rune, still upright and inverted meanings of each rune to be applied in divination methods. And I have also shown some divination methods as well on those, on those blogs. Um, some are from the tarot, of course, others are not. And in this entire decade, many of the contents of my past blogs, especially uh, concerning the runes and uh, rune divination methods, have been uh, copied by many authors uh, and, 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 and have appeared uh, in a couple of books and, and other blogs. I'm not complaining about the fact that many people have taken what I have created, mind you. Uh, it's, it's actually good, I think, to, to see that many people in this past decade, a little bit more than a decade, have adopted what I have created before. Uh, even before I, I, I had a YouTube channel, and, uh, and it was just really blogging. Information is meant to be shared and used. I'm just telling you this so you can be aware of the modern developments and, and things you see out there concerning divination methods with the runes. So, uh, one of the reasons that made me start a YouTube, cha a YouTube channel uh, almost five years ago was precisely because of those who followed my blogs. I had a couple of people who were either blind or, or uh, partially blind or visually impaired in some way due to, a spe to specific ailments or simply dyslexic. So, they asked me if I could turn the information in my blogs into audio format. So, so I did. And uh, in the meantime, I have completely abandoned my blogs and uh, dedicated my full free time to YouTube. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with the divination methods in this channel. This, the same thing I have done with my rune series, turning into audio what I have written in my blogs uh, concerning uh, those subjects. However, obviously, with new developments, more information, more methods. It's been a whole decade since my first blog post concerning rune divination methods and meanings. So uh, there's been some developments, obviously. So this is just to warn you, uh, to warn some of you that may already be familiar with a couple of divination methods I shall present in this new series in this channel. Uh, because, well, they have been circulating for a little bit more than a decade now, uh, when I was writing in blogs, uh, even before I became an archaeologist. But surely, uh, there will be new developments and more information. As I said before, uh, many rune divination methods come from the tarot, and many rune meanings also come from the tarot. Uh, not the ones I have developed, of course, uh, but at least the idea of an upright and inverted position and the specific meaning for each position of a rune in a rune reading also comes from the tarot, and that much remains the same. The tarot is a card system, as you know, originating from various parts of Europe and developed as an oracular art or method during the 17th century, therefore with no direct relation to the runes whatsoever. <laughs> However, the idea of a rune meaning in the upright position and <laughs> another completely different meaning uh, in an inverted position of, of the rune is an idea of the tarot adapted to the runes or transported into the runes. So we are dealing with the tarot method of analyzing the sim symbolism of the card by its position. Concerning that, I see no harm. As I said earlier, <laughs> everything must evolve and adapt to so that we can form a better interaction not only with the supernatural and the magical and, and the mystical and the mysterious, but also to create a better interaction between us and the world that surrounds us, all around us. I see no harm in using the runes as objects or tools uh, that help in divination, even if it is not something historically accurate or correct. But once again, we transform and adapt everything to immerse ourselves more easily in the magic and mystery that are very much part of the world and of life itself. 
Therefore, several methods of reading the tarot were adapted or transported into the runes and uh, giving other names, of course, more familiar or more in line or linked to the pre-Christian uh, Germanic belief systems, such as the um, triple circle method becoming represented by the Norns when using that method with the runes in divination, uh, intertwining of triangles, uh, which is now called the Volknut method, nine worlds of Yggdrasil method, the runic cross, which is nothing more than an adaptation of the traditional uh, Celtic cross method used in the tarot. The Celtic cross method itself has nothing to do with Celtic culture, um, and so on and so forth. You, you get the point. That is methods developed from Norse mythology, also without any historical basis. The tarot uh, method remains the disposition remains, right? Uh, let's say the, the foundations of the methods remain. However, the meanings of each rune are altered to avoid uh, following the same line of thought and the same belief systems within the tarot. Uh, that's what I have done in the past uh, and what others have done before me, of course, and others after me have also done that. Uh, the structure of the divination methods remains but the entire meanings have been changed to better fit into the pagan mentality as much as, as it is possible. The interpretations of the runes vary quite a lot, as you might imagine. Some mostly use only the Anglo-Saxon rune poem to understand the material and spiritual meaning of the runes. Others prefer to focus on the Icelandic, Norwegian, even the Swedish and, and the um, Abecedarium Normanicum ru runic poems and, the, and to merge it all together. As you know, if you have seen my rune series, uh, my videos on, of my rune series, I personally developed the meaning not only from the rune poems, but also the adaptation of pagan and animistic thinking from an archaeological and um, historical perspective as much as we are able to perceive and linked to the needs of today. Anyway, of course, there is another great influence concerning the meaning of the runes and um, uh, their interpretations in rune readings and the divination methods, which is important to refer uh, such as the esoteric uh, publications of the Northern American Stephen Flowers, also known as Adred Thorson, the founder of the Rune Guild, uh, an esoteric pagan school that has written extensively on runes in an um, esoteric and occult perspective, of course. The Rune Guild, founded in 1980, um, I have already talked about this in, in this channel, um, well, it's classified as an esoteric school as well as a paganist and radical traditionalist school. It was originated by the inheritance of romantic impulses about paganism at the end of the 19th century, which was the fascination with nature and ideas of nation and race. Also has a great influence on the esoteric reaction of René Guignon, uh, questioning modernity. He was uh, questioning mo modernity uh, and, and completely trying to disengage from modern thinking of the early 20th century with a lot of more focus on Islamic religious mysticisms, actually. And the Rune Guild is also very much influenced by ideas of Satanism from Anton Levy's Church of Satan and from the, the Temple of Set as well. Stephen Flowers is part of both. So, so uh, Stephen Flowers and therefore the, the Rune Guild is based on a mixture of different currents, as you can see. An esoteric approach to the runes that I mostly disagree with and avoid, and I very much avoided when I made my videos about the Rune series, especially because it continues to demonstrate a radical understanding uh, strongly based on racial and, and, and radical nationalist politics of the 19th and the early 20th centuries, and little based on paganism and completely discarding the animistic mentality. 
the obsolete understandings of the 17th century of, of the tarot brought to the runes were quite enough. Bringing these radical thoughts of the 19th century into the runes has worsened the understanding of the runes and um, I consider that this has a strong negative influence when we, we use these understandings and this these, and these information in oracular processes, using the runes uh, in, 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 that, in those terms. But that's just my opinion, of course. I hate bigotry. So, as I said today, I'm not giving you a divination method with the runes, not yet. Uh, this is indeed just an introduction, so you may be aware of what's to come, but also the importance of being aware of what is esoteric and what is historically accurate, concerning the runes, of course, and, uh, and divination methods. And divination as a whole, uh, when it comes to the runes. On my future videos concerning divination methods with the runes, I'll try to keep it all simple. And indeed, we shall start with simple methods and progressively move towards those that are perhaps a little bit more complex. Most of these methods are drawn from the tarot, as I've said. Not all of them, of course, but the structure of the methods is quite useful. And indeed, it works at least for me, um, but but I I'm mainly transforming into video format uh, what I have already written about in my past blogs in my early twenties, and I I want to say that I know many people also use the blank rune in rune readings, often called the weird rune, the rune of fate. Uh, many rune readers have introduced an extra blank rune to the accepted symbols of the Elder Futhark, however. Since the runes are essentially an alphabet and each rune represents a letter, I think there is very little justification for this. In fact, <laughs> uh, historically speaking, runes were not used for divination or any oracular process, so we are only dealing with known runes from a specific period, not even a development from the late Iron Age in Scandinavia, but in fact, the set of runes known as the Elder Futhark. So no point in adding a blank rune that never existed and just creates even more confusion. But of course, you can use it. Obviously, I'm not condemning it. I'm, ju I'm just making a point. I, I will not be using the blank rune in future videos concerning rune divination methods. So. I'll just stick with the runes of the Elder Futhark, the ones I have talked about in my esoteric approach to the runes in, in those rune series previously spoken. So <laughs> that's it. Uh, I'll present you a method later on. Everything will be very simple, I think, uh, very basic. Uh, it's, it's really just so you have a visual perception of a method and audio uh, for the, the visually impaired who have accompanied me since, the, since at least 2009 in my blogs. And of course, those who have come after and will continue to come, I hope. <laughs> um, so I don't think I will be presenting anything new, at least not to me and, and, and many more who already know my works or the works of others, of course. And the works of others who have copied from my works, sneaky little devils, <laughs> just kidding. All in all, it's just to facilitate spreading information and to have it in a format that will make it easier to reach a lot more people. So that's just it. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It was just a little bit of information and introduction to what's to come in this channel, the, the rune divination methods. I hope you will enjoy those and I hope you find those useful. They work for me, but they might not work for, for you. But we, we shall see. We are just exploring, right? We are just trying and see what works for us. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, talk for you. Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje.